Last night, the moon was in its first quarter phase. I'll spare you the nerdy jargon, but in short, half the moon was lit. The other half was dark. Or missing, I guess you could say. As I was taking the dog out, the sky was absolutely beautiful. If you've listened to recent episodes, you've heard my fascination with stargazing. I stood in one place, staring at the moon, as the dog walked about on his leash. It was like the moon was cut in half, right down the middle. Reminding me of the black and white cookies that I love so much from New York, but everything reminds me of a cookie. Chad, focus... But as I admired the beauty of the stars in this half moon, I started thinking how the moon represents life. The time we've already lived, our experiences, our memories, the life we've already had. But the other half of the moon, the side that was dark, it made me think of what I haven't seen. I knew there was another side of the moon not highlighted. I knew it was there, and even though it wasn't fully lit yet, Before long, it would be in complete view. Well, okay, second thought. Let me nerd out just for a bit, but I promise this will circle back. Just hang with me. The first quarter moon phase, which was last night's, is a one-day event. And in the following days, the moon enters what's called the waxing gibbous phase, which becomes more illuminated each day until the full moon. Think about that for a moment. You've lived this far in life, but that's not all you have left to show. Sometimes it feels like everything you've done up to this point is just that, done. Like there's nothing left of you to give. Maybe the devotion you once had no longer applies, be it a family or a career or a community, and you're saying, now what? Why am I here? What is my purpose? you ask. Let's go back to this moon analogy. Right now, you're in this phase, this half-seen period. You are entering a different phase, a different season, one that you can't quite see yet, but it's there. There is still so, so much more of you left to see. Let's shine some light and the purpose waiting to come into the complete fullness of you. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's comment down in three, two, one. There are two great days in a person's life. The day we are born, and the day we discover why. William Barclay. We've all heard the numerous quotes on finding your purpose or what's the meaning of life, and so on and so forth. I think it's safe to say we each want to have a purpose, a reason, and why we are here. Though it can be sometimes difficult in finding this quote unquote purpose. There is even such a thing as purpose anxiety, where we stress ourselves into wondering. What is my purpose and why have I not found it yet? I'm not saving wells. I'm not helping those adorable animals in the Sarah McLaughlin commercials. Should I plant a tree or something? What is my life? Stop. Just stop. What if we never find our purpose? What if it's not meant to be found in the first place? I've always envisioned this like finding something I had misplaced. Oh yeah, that's where I put that shirt. I wondered where that was. But instead of it being something found, it's something we created. Let me oversimplify this purpose, song and dance, just a little bit. If I give my kids a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, they'll say, thanks dad, appreciate it, and go about there jumping on the trampoline. But if they make the sandwich themselves, they're more likely to say, Hey dad, look at this sandwich I made. Can I make one for you? To which I have now come to expect my youngest, who's age 7, to bring a PB&J to my office each afternoon, as he then goes into great detail on the steps to making the sandwich as if he had learned it straight from Julia Child. 
By the way, the secret to a PB&J is to whip the peanut butter and jelly in a bowl prior to spreading it on a lightly toasted bread. It will change your life, but hey, that's just me. But for my seven-year-old, why he may not understand the concept completely, he's created a purpose, bringing my lunch, by way of something he put his hands to, making a sandwich. And he enjoys doing it, seeing the outcome of his work. To him, making a sandwich has become meaningful. He enjoys doing it, which brings value to him, and he knows my gratitude and enjoyment of the masterfully whipped PB&J, which I find immense value in. If there's one thing to take away from this entire episode of what our purpose or reason for being can be, is learned from a seven-year-old, are you ready? I'm going to help you find your purpose in one sentence. What can I do with my time that is important to me? That's it. What can I do with my time that's important to me? For some of you, this would be raising a family, maybe writing a book, or some of you having a vegetable garden. What is important to you? Take a few moments, fix a nice cup of coffee or tea or something else, and write down what you enjoy most. What is something that nurtures your soul when you do it? Don't overthink it. Make a list. Keep it simple. It may be a number of things. And as you do some of them, you may realize you enjoy some of them more than the others. And in the days, weeks of going through this list and finding what gives you life, create an awareness to see any potential opportunities, how this can reach into the lives of others. Raising a family? Well, that's enough said. Writing the book? You never know what it will inspire in others. The garden you're so passionate about may very well feed friends and family or even a homeless shelter in your area. Even the other day, someone close to me mentioned giving their time to a local care center. What can I do with my time that is important to me? What activity is life-giving to you that you can in turn be life-giving to others? Your meaning is meaningful to someone else. Dictionary.com states a purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Be in the hands behind the creation. Be the emotion in helping someone broken. Be the inspiration behind someone's dreams. There is still so much to you that you cannot see. But it's there. It's there. And with every step into this next phase, you will see yourself in a new fullness of light, self-assurance, and purpose. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. 
I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CommentDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.